What's up everyone? Before I jump into this video, I want to let you know about a brand new YouTube channel that I just launched called Drew Binsky Unseen, where I'll be sharing lots of new stories, outtakes, and unexpected moments that I've never shared before. I got this idea after going through all my old hard drives and finding tons of gems on there, which I can't wait to show you guys. So with that being said, we jump back in to today's video. The most common way that we measure a nation's economy is by GDP or gross domestic production. It's the total value of all goods and services produced within a country in any given year. The top five countries with the largest GDPs are the USA, China, Japan, Germany, and the UK, but not every country is an economic powerhouse. Some countries don't have as many resources, making production a difficult task. Others have a tiny population, which translates to a limited labor for growth, and they rely on foreign aid from other states. The following countries are within the top 20 smallest economies in the world, and I've been to all of these that I'm going to tell you about, so we start right away with Nauru. I went to Nauru about a year and a half ago. It is located in the South Pacific Sea, and it is, in fact, the least visited country in the world. Nauru! There are around 200 tourists every single year. That's it. Welcome to Nauru. The whole island is about four kilometers wide in a circle, so you can literally walk around the whole place within a couple hours, and that's it, then you've seen everything. It's very, very humble. There's about 10,000 people living there, and as a side note, it is actually the most obese country in the world, with 71% of its inhabitants classified as obese, and the reason being because they don't really grow anything, so they have to import a lot of canned food from Australia and stuff, and that's primarily what their diet consists of, is canned food. The next nation I want to tell you about that has a small economy is called Sao Tome and Principe. It is two islands located off the western coast of Central Africa. They are Portuguese speaking island nations. It's actually really beautiful. Welcome to Sao Tome and Principe. I hope you have fun. I had a great time there. The equator runs directly through Sao Tome, so you can take a little adventure out there. You have to take a boat. It was really cool. So, this is a bit scarier than it looks with the storm approaching because at any moment, uh, we could be screwed and the boat's super rocky. And I had this whole area to myself, these beautiful mountains with coconut trees and really blue seawater. Hey guys, I'd like to introduce you to my new friend. His name is Equator. He's a really nice guy and he's pretty tall, standing about seven foot five inches. Santa Mae is one of the most relaxing countries I've ever been to. And one of the coolest things is that they produce a lot of chocolate, which is where most of their GDP comes from. I went to the chocolate factory there and I was able to see how the production works. And yeah, I don't know what else to say about Sao Tome. I have great memories of it and I hope to be back someday soon. The next small economy country I want to tell you about is called the Gambia. Welcome to country 182, the Gambia. It is located in West Africa, surrounded all by Senegal, except for a little sliver on the Atlantic Ocean. It's only Gambia, it's only peace we have in this country, man, and love from unity and everything, you know? It is technically an English-speaking country, but there is a lot of French being spoken there, and it is the smallest country on mainland Africa. You can literally drive around the whole country in a day, which is exactly what we did. It is literally the greenest country I've ever seen and it's really beautiful. I have awesome drone shots going around the country. There's a really cool port with a market going through a fish market and people there are generally happy. There's a lot of tourists coming in from Europe because it's a cheap getaway and there's lots of bars and nightclubs and stuff. And for what it was worth, I really enjoyed the Gambia. Smiling because of Africa. <laughs> and even though my video there didn't really reflect that because I was in the heat of the moment, I would definitely like to give it another try. Okay, for the next country, we head back over to the Pacific to the little country called Tuvalu. There are only two flights a week heading to Tuvalu from nearby Fiji. That's it. So if you have to leave for any reason, then you better call an emergency helicopter or a plane to get you out of there. But I don't think you're going to want to leave because it is paradise. It's a long, narrow island. You can rent a motorbike and drive all the way around and get some really cool views But to me the coolest thing about Tuvalu is the fact that the airport runway turns into a playground and the whole island is invited So obviously the airport is mostly inactive except for the two times a week when the flights are coming So it's just a huge space with tar and they're playing all the different sports and everyone's out there having fun They even sleep outside there and look at the stars because you're just in the middle of the ocean It's such a cool experience and Tuvalu really has a place in my heart It is such a simple life and a amazing sunsets and really friendly people. For the next country, we head back over to Africa, to Eastern Africa, to a little island called Comoros. It is obviously one of the smallest economies in the world, which is why it's in this video, but I really had a good time there, and it's cool because it's a mix of cultures. You have French, Swahili, and Arabic roots, 
in terms of ethnicity, in terms of food, in terms of lifestyle and culture. And it's a really cool mix. Everyone there speaks three languages. It is surprisingly a very Muslim country, just like the Maldives, which is in the same sea. But Comoros is filled with beautiful beaches, active volcanoes, and delicious food that really caught me by surprise. So we are gonna try some pilau? Yes. How is that? Good. A little spicy. The next small economy I'm gonna tell you about today is called San Marino. It is a small landlocked city-state right in the center of Italy. I took a bus there about four years ago and had a really good time. The whole entire country is only 23 miles long, so it's really small, but you have these rolling hills, beautiful, beautiful views. You have really old fortresses, kind of like medieval fortresses that take you way back in time. And speaking of history, San Marino is considered to have the oldest surviving national constitution in the world. And lastly, this brings me into the final country I'm gonna tell you about today with a small economy, and that is St. Kitts and Nevis, one of the most beautiful countries in the Caribbean. I had the chance to go there about two years ago on my Caribbean trip, and I really enjoyed it. It is so small, and I found out later that it's actually the smallest country in all of the Americas, but just like all around the Caribbean, you can find crystal clear blue water, really friendly and happy people, delicious Creole food. They have a deep love for the sport of cricket, and the coolest thing about St. Kitts is there are so many monkeys, and they're not indigenous to the island. They were brought over from West Africa hundreds of years ago, but they have thrived because it's a similar climate, which is so awesome. All right, guys, that brings me to the end of this video. I enjoyed talking about the smallest economies in the world. I did leave a few out. There's a lot in the Pacific, like Kiribati, like the Marshall Islands, like Samoa, but I wanted to give some diversity, so I tried to pick a few of the top 20 just to educate you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Once again, I'm struggling with content these days because of COVID, but I'm trying to pump out videos like this because I have so much footage right here in front of me on all these hard drives. So with that being said, have an awesome day, guys. You know the drill by now. Take care, be kind, and stay humble. See you later. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video and just wanna send another reminder to subscribe to my new YouTube channel called Drubinsky Unseen. I'm telling you guys, there are so many untold stories that I have and I can't wait to show them to you. I'm gonna be uploading as much as I can. So don't miss it, subscribe to it, have an awesome day and I'll see you later.